Are you familiar with this battery? Then please raise your hand and tell me what brand is selling this in your country. Uh, I believe this is the most common rack battery in the world. This is a generic OEM product that I believe over a hundred brands worldwide use. Only in Scandinavia at least 10 brands are using this battery. And it looks pretty good. It's 36 volts and uh, at 8.8 .8 amp hours, which they round up to 900 milliamp hours. This is the most common version. There's also 24 volt and there are also a high capacity version, but this is the most common. 99% or more of all batteries we've seen in this case is this kind of exactly the same. However, there is a big problem with the uh, water on this battery because it's not possible to use heat shrink and there's absolutely no possible way to do any form of uh, waterproofing on the inside. There is <laughs> the only thing protecting the battery cells and the electronics from water is the case itself. And the case itself is not that good at resisting water. This is basically, basically how it looks like and the cells are in order in 10 different sections. And this is the bottom part and you can clearly see that there's been a lot of water in here. <laughs> um, making rust at the nickel connection and uh, we really don't know where, where exactly the water is coming in from. But one of the things that breaks first is this uh, LED. As you can see here it's clearly water damage. All the screws, all the components, it's just... It looks like you've been laying under salt water for a year or something. Uh, however, it's very well waterproofed on the top side. So I doubt, uh, I really doubt water could come in from here because the sticker is... Uh, there's no problem with the stickers. It looks like there could be holes, but it's just a little damaged. Let's take a look below this one. Oh. It's just beyond repair. It was actually working for a little bit, but it was going, giving too much or too low voltage. So, plastic piece, not rubber or something. And this is the only part where water could leak in. And since this one is solid, it couldn't possibly come from here. Some of these have had uh, a fuse box on the top, which we believe might be one of the problems. We actually ordered one of these uh, OEM cases, uh, it will be shipped with DOL, so it could be a week or so before we get it complete with the controller, I think, and the mounting part. And as you can see on the bottom side, the only place where water could possibly come in is the screw holes. And it would be kind of strange for water to travel up on the bottom into the screw holes and in. And also the indicator. Since the BMS was damaged the last time, we had to replace it. But it's the exactly same kind of thing, but it's not lit. Um, and we don't use 100 kilos of silicone on the inside. But this is not a place where water could come in either, because usually they look like this. They probably know that this case is not that waterproof, so they add like a ton of silicone to every part. Except when it comes, uh, except when it's important. This uses a 5 pin connector, but the case is always that only two are used, positive and negative. The three other ones are not used. It sits like this in the back. And here for some reason they don't add any silicone. And if you notice case, you know there's a rubber list going all the way around the case. Tightly knitted in here, all the way here. But here it stops. And this is where this one sits, the output controller. And it doesn't have any, uh, but we believe here is where the water is coming in. And the most likely reason for this, when you pull in your battery into the holder and it is rainy outside, uh, for what we believe the holder is solid, so there might be collecting a lot of water and when you just push the battery into this puddle of water, 
that sits next to the controller and everything. You push the water up against the, the wall <laughs> and since it's so tightly fit, most of the water is just pressed inside through, through this connector. And then it starts to rinse, connecting to all the cells, starting from the, from the back, making the connections poorer and poorer. Adding resistance and finally it drips down to here where the controller sits. Now the controller is actually in the top part so it's one of the last things that um, uh, gets water damaged. But when, when there are like the water in here rinsing back and forth especially when you ride. And there's just like a flood wave going back and forth, back and forth. Then looks every piece of the battery gets its equal share of water damage eventually. They could have easily solved this by having a rubber lift before. I talked to, you recently talked to one of Sweden's biggest importers of these batteries and they asked We don't have any problem We had a couple of returns but we didn't bother checking inside them, they could be water damaged But as long as we don't check inside them, we know nothing about that, huh? Yeah, real good job you guys In most cases water damage like this takes several years to build up and then you have to new, buy a new battery, even though it's the manufacturer and the reseller that is the biggest problem, because they asked, let's not do anything about this port back here. Let's not have a rubber seal, let's not have a silicon seal, let's do nothing at all about it, and all of our customers will have to buy a new battery in one to two years. It's uh, planned adolescence at its worst, and the worst thing is that the importer, importers doesn't even know about this, they don't bother looking inside the battery. I, I just get so mad and worked up at these uh, resellers and imp importers that just doesn't even check the goods, not even once do they open the batteries. And that's so common in the e-bike business, you never know what you get, not even the importer importers have any idea what they're selling. I, I just get so mad about that because I get so many batteries and the customer complained, this was so expensive, why did it last longer? And I tried to explain to them that they used poor quality cells. About the screws on this case, these are pretty special, they are triangle shaped. And that's a special anti-tamper screw heads. So you have to get special tools to open it, triangle ones. This is 2.5 millimeters, it's a little big but it works. The optimal one is the one that's um, 2 millimeters. Also 2.1 or 2.2 millimeters would work fine to open this case. And it's um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And here on the top, for some stupid reason, <laughs> they couldn't have um, the on off button here. To make sure there were two screws on each side. So this side, this side is a little loose. Not really loose, but as you see, there, this, these are the opposite uh, screws. So it's possible that water could come in here, around this button, since there are not really any pressure from the screws holding it together. And that is one of the faults. I believe that Geobi, you know, the world's biggest e-bike manufacturer, is behind this case, because they made a similar case a few years before, like in 2009, that they used the exact same screws, a lot of the same connections and components, but it's a lot smaller, a lot uglier, but it says Giobi on it, so I believe this is the refined OEM version that is just so popular today. I don't think you can see it on the camera, but there's actually a small, there's actually a small gap here. Not very big, but uh, big enough for water to, here you can see I can bend it out like 2 millimeters, and it might be big enough for water to slip by the rubber list. So, stupid Chinese designers couldn't possibly move the switch to here, or why not have it here? So that they can have screw holes on the opposite side, making a good battery case instead of a weak battery case. Okay, now I have a water spray and I have a battery. Ooh, it's raining, watch out. Heavy rain. Heavy rain, stand yeah, we're gonna lay it like there for a bit. This looks pretty scientific, doesn't it? Okay, let's have a look if there is any water on the inside. 
and this is from spraying in just a few minutes of uh, simulated rain and here you have the top side and I've been um, careful not to tip it over so much you can see there's no traces of water here here's a little little bit but on the bottom side this is just from one minute of spraying it with a spray all the screws were heavily in place you can see that there's already too much water in here to be acceptable to really tell where it comes from is not that easy but it's clearly from the back part because some of it might have um, uh, when I flip the case over some of it must, might have ran to this side and there a little bit here but on this one this side it's totally wet and when you lift this there's just water everywhere the water is clearly coming from the rear side and it's uh, I just sprayed from the top side so you can't possibly be the screw holes I don't know how you can get so much water in for one minute of spraying it's just insane could it, could it, be, could it be hiding in here somewhere just waiting to pop out when I started spraying if they had used just a little bit of silicone like they did on these ones maybe this wouldn't be such a big problem I'm gonna let this dry out and uh, do another test tomorrow